Great. It's, uh, I'm in my favorite meeting anyway, the, the Association of Bone and Joint Surgeons, and it's really great this year because it's in Seattle, Washington, a uh, home game for me. The meeting hasn't been here since 1972. And the hotel has special meaning to me. My grandmother worked here. She was a singer and played the piano in the Marine Room, then called the Olympic Hotel. And uh, when I was nine, she summoned me down here to, uh, because she got the great opportunity to meet one of the guests and was one of her customers in the evening. Martin Luther King visited Seattle when I was nine and stayed here. And he, he was shepherded around town by Reverend McKinney. I don't remember anything about him except that he had very nice shoes. And I, I, mean, I remember shaking his hand and thinking, boy, that's a really nice pair of shoes. And other than that, 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 that was the impression that I was left with. This is one of my most important talks to, to give hip resurfacing in teenagers. Not a big interest thing, and I'm going to make a, a plea that the femoral head's not a surplus part. Sometimes we, because of the great success of total hips, we think that and it has important relationships in, in the body and has a definite function, so it shouldn't be just easily discarded. People think of resurfacing very rarely and hardly at all, and this might be a time when somebody might think, well, maybe resurfacing is needed. This is a hip so deformed, probably you can't do a total hip, at least not any easy way. Uh, otherwise, we don't see a lot of interest in hip resurfacing. Here's another chance where you think, well, maybe there is a reason for it. Another patient of mine, it, it was a, a simpler, more straightforward option in this case. But when you get to children, it's different. A teenager, and, and I get these that come in now and again, and I'll tell you just how many in, in a few minutes. So here's a, a case I had, injured in sports, fracture dislocation of the hip, avascular necrosis occurred, and then a fibular, vascularized fibular graft was done. Didn't salvage the head though, and now we have a real problem. Not only a, a damaged femoral head, a crippled child, adducted, can't hardly walk, pain all the time, wouldn't go to school anymore. And both sets of grandparents called me. What can you do? That fibula is in the way. So is some of the hardware. Well, this seemed like the uh, best solution. And it turned out it was. This uh, has gone on to a very nice long-term outcome. It does matter uh, why you would consider the, not just doing a total hip even if you could. There are some concepts that apply for hip resurfacing. The most important one mentioned in this slide is right in the center there. It transmits the stress physiologically. And there's other issues too about the bone retention both in real time and for future revision potential. And it, and this is, uh, th these are concepts that have gone on for many years. This is a slide from Charles Townley himself who taught me hip resurfacing. This is another instance where you might want to think of it. Again, fracture dislocation, internal fixation was done. It went on to avascular necrosis. And again, you can see the adduction, uh, deformity, the, the pelvic obliquity, the great difficulty moving the hip, getting around, and, and, and pain on top of it. So a real functional challenge. And uh, this happened just playing basketball. And it was treated, uh, fortunately, to a good outcome with the hip resurfacing. You can't just do any type of hip resurfacing. We've learned that over the years. This is the type that, that works. This is what we are talking about in this paper. Polyethylene, highly cross-linked polyethylene, ceramic coated titanium, so it's light. And this is for uh, cementless fixation as, as well in this uh, application. It has to be very thin polyethylene. This has been questioned a lot in the past, not so much now. People are coming to a, a closer agreement that maybe you can have, with cross-link at least, four millimeters of polyethylene and have it all work out. But that's all the real estate you have available for these cases. It's not to say we didn't try other things. 
polyurethane, conventional polyethylene, and metal. These didn't work, though. The acetabular component is the key. Uh, any kind of cap on the femur can work out. So it was really the acetabulin that we had to master to make this work, and mostly the polyethylene. With crosslink, you did have to change the, the grade of polyethylene to 1020, but uh, the polyethylene that you can use today, it, it works. And it doesn't have to be anything special. This is a very common type of highly crosslink polyethylene to use. It has to be ETO sterilized, of course. We've learned that. That's conventional polyethylene. That's the cases we did years ago, and you can see it narrowed and don't have wear. And worse yet, osteolysis. Well, why not just a total hip? Anyone can do one, and they do work. 70, 90 percent good or excellent results, and that's true even in children. You can make it work. Trouble is, though, stress shielding. At 10 years, 62 percent will have it. And with it, the implant retention rate is going to be better with resurfacing because of that. It's not the implant itself that fails. It's the bone supporting it that does. Also, there's some functional benefits that go with this. I'll talk about this in a minute more. P8 double S pass. So we had 105 patients. I, I'm fortunate to practice long enough to get them because the, you really only see, a, uh, fortunately, uh, a couple cases or maybe three in a year that, like this coming in. I picked out the, the most challenging age. We have done under 12 now, but hardly at all. 12 to 19 is what I looked at. Pretty even mix between male and female standard head sizes, a lot of prior surgery in these cases as they come in, and, and a lot of times there is hardware, or in the case I showed you, fibula in the way. The indications uh, can be kind of anything that children might have, as listed there. We don't exclude osteonecrosis. You'd like to because you're worried about the, will it work, is the head good enough to support it, but we take the cases on. I, I don't say no often in this age group because of avascular necrosis. Sometimes there just isn't a head to support it and you have to say no. Otherwise, it's the usual indications. The outcomes, well, they're good, uh, but so would a, a total hip be. UCLA score, that's a very good score, and Harris hip score also. And minimal clinically important difference, they all meet that, and that was a 28 point increase but that just tells you that your surgery worked. It doesn't really tell you that your patient's all the way to well. It just says they're better. And better's not good enough in a teenager. This is what really matters. Patient acceptable symptomatic state. And this is the question we asked to, to get the answer. With hip resurfacing, 85% of the patients will answer that question. That's the key question. 69% of them said they could do the sports they wanted. That, that's a really good number. That number you're not going to get and, and you don't get with a total hip replacement. Total hip replacement does work. You can get good Harris hip score. You can get a, all these patient report outcome scores will look good. You can make your patient better, but you can't get them all the way well, which is what the real goal needs to be. This is, these are patients that have their whole life ahead of them. Yes, we had revisions, not many. I took out one conventional polyethylene liner. She said, well, I thought you were using Crosslink. Well, I do, but I had bilateral cases, and some of them had a, a conventional before we had Crosslink in them, and I included them because it was the other hip. And that came out at 12 years. Yes, it was worn. I'll show a picture in a minute. We also had one that didn't work. The femoral uh, component loosened. The head just didn't stay good enough. And I, I revised that case, too. Technique's critical. I, I won't uh, emphasize that enough except to say it's got to be great. You've got to do a wonderful job on these cases, and they're not easy. All these kids have deformed hips. There's contractures. There's prior surgery. Um, these are hard cases to do. They're the hardest ones I do. Um, and I get the most keyed up to do them. 
I do have two retrievals, just two. There was a patient that died in this group. I got that one back. I also got the one back when I did a revision of the femur. I didn't need to get it back because I just revised the femur. You can leave the, the acetabular component. We were there anyway, and it's before I realized that cross-linked polyethylene is not gonna wear out. We took it out so, and put another same one type back in. The retrievals, and you can, if you can see closely enough, you can still read the machine markings on these. They just simply don't wear. The wear is measured in hundreds of a millimeter. We haven't revised any cases. I haven't done it in my practice at all, a revision for a highly cross-linked polyethylene liner yet. Don't think I will do one. There's a uh, non-cross-link all beat up by comparison, the one I took out for that. The biomechanics tends to be good on these and better than, typically than you can get and that's reassuring, probably relates to why the function tends to be good. But this, it's the progressive resistance of wear that made this operation work along with some technical details now when it didn't used to work. And my friends at the hospital, uh, they joke with me now, says, well, you know, we look up to you now, you did the operation when it didn't work, and you're still doing it now when it seems to. We don't see osteolysis even by CT scan which is very reassuring. That used to be the death of hip resurfacing, osteolysis from uh, polyethylene. So hip resurfacing in teenagers, it's, it's really worth a second look. I don't think we should just jump to total hip replacement in these cases. Thanks a lot. I'll take the questions later.